Chi erano i Longobardi? Who were the Lombards? The name means people of the long beards and was assumed following the victorious campaign against the ferocious Vandals in the first century before Christ. The mythographic account of the events that accompanied the long southward migration of the Lombards across northeastern Europe is drawn from later works written only after their arrival in Italy around 568 AD. In the Horrigo Gentis Longobardorum, epic light opera composed in 643 AD, in which much more ancient traditions merge, the Lombards were said to have originally called themselves Winili and have lived in Scania, the current day Sweden. They were a non-migratory population, farmers devoted to female cults connected with the fertility of the earth and of the harvests. Subsistence motives caused the Winili to cross the North Sea to reach the fertile lands of Germany. From this point onward, the group underwent a radical change in character. From a tranquil farming people, dedicated mainly to breathing livestock and to hunting, they became a migrant and bellicose population followers of the god Votan Odin, whose children they considered themselves, and from whom they took their name. In fact, one of Votan's appellatives was God of the Long Beard. In this regard, I like to stress the importance of the social role of women revealed in the saga of the Lombards. They were called upon to participate in the events of war, even if through subterfuge. According to legend, the victory of the Vandals was ensured by the presence of young Lombard girls who, disguised as beard warriors, with their long hair fastened under their chins, contribute to discouraging the enemy who made a hasty retreat before an army apparently so numerous. And this further reinforced the appellative, the people of the Longbeards. During the centuries-long migration from Germany toward the south in Pannonia and finally through the territories of current-day Slonia into Italy, little by little, other nomad or semi-nomad tribal groups belonging to different ethnicities joined the original nucleus of Winili, forming diplomatic alliances, sharing customs and traditions and in the end identifying themselves as Lombards. We have no knowledge of the lives of the Lombards before their arrival in Italy. The events during the long migration make reference to prevalently oral tradition and to substantially mythographical re-elaboration of their deeds. It would be Paul the Deacon, a Christian monk of Lombard origin, to eventually write a history called precisely Historia Langobardorum. Paul the Deacon is one of the most important sources of Lombard history, but certainly should be taken with a grain of salt, since he wrote when the Lombard rule in Italy was substantially over. I would add that what he writes is sometimes a veritable reworked version of their deeds. Not all is based on fact, but rather on rhetoric about the Lombards. But let us come back to the arrival of the Lombards in Italy. They reached Italy in 568 AD under the guidance of King Alboin. Having occupied Friuli, they progressively conquered a great part of the national territory, creating an independent kingdom able to contrast Byzantine dominion. Almost all of the north of the peninsula belonged to the Lombards the so-called Langobardia Maior, with its territories directly subject to the king and the duchy of Forum Iuli, that is, Cividale Autonomous. In the centre and south, instead, were the duchies of Spoleto and Benevento, which together formed the so-called Langobardia Minor. In June 2011, UNESCO added to its World Heritage List the serial site The Longobards in Italy, Places of Power, 568-774 AD, consisting of the seven monumental complexes which represent the most important evidence of the Langobardia Maior and Minor, including the Basilica di San Salvatore in Spoleto and the Tempietto del Cliptunno in Campello sul Cliptunno.